Welcome to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. This is Ballooning 101. Hi, I'm Nita Courtney Bueno, and I've been volunteering for the Balloon Fiesta for, this will be my 34th year. The first flight story of ballooning goes along the lines of two brothers, uh, the Montgolfier brothers, uh, noticed um, among the streets in where they lived, they uh, saw that smoke would rise, so they decided to try and um, capture that. And they, in, uh, let's see, 1783, they built a balloon and they put uh, two folks in it, Pilotre de Rossier and the Marquis de Alandres, and they flew from the Chateau de la Mouet in Annonay, France. Um, they used fire from straw and wood to heat the air to keep them aloft. The flight covered five miles in the balloon, and one of the spectators there was Benjamin Franklin. The different parts of the balloon, um, you'll notice when the balloon is inflated, you have the basket on the ground. It's usually made out of wicker, not always. You have the envelope, which is the fabric part of the balloon. The crown is the top of the balloon, and the throat is the, the space between the burner and the, and the uh, envelope. The average balloon um, can fly for about two hours, and uh, in that two-hour flight, they'll probably use approximately 30 to 40 gallons of propane, depending on the air, depending on where they're at, depending on the time of year. Depends on the size of the balloon, and it depends on how many people they take up in it. So there's a lot of dependent factors in ballooning. Um, the uh, average flight is usually about an hour. Uh, the envelope is actually made out of a nylon fabric. Um, some balloons are made out of rayon. Most manufacturers put in a ripstop factor into the fabric so that if the fabric does start to tear, it, um, it has fibers in it that will keep that tear from progressing. There are load tapes around the balloon at different intervals depending on the manufacturer to help keep the integrity of the balloon. A balloon cannot steer, per se. A balloon will fly in the direction of the wind, and if the winds are going to a direction that we don't want to fly to, say a place where there are no landing spots, then we will not fly. Um, or if the winds are higher than a certain speed. At the Balloon Fiesta, we have a limit on the uh, speed of the wind before we can take off. It's part of our waiver with the FAA. Different winds at different altitudes may go different directions. Albuquerque is famous for something called the Albuquerque Box. And at different altitudes, the wind will actually go 180 degrees to where um, it's going, say, on the ground. So the different stages of the flight is um, when you get out to Balloon Fiesta Park, you'll see all the balloons are on their trucks um, or trailers, and they'll uh, pull the, the balloon out of the truck or trailer and they'll lay it out. So they'll um, put the basket on the ground and they usually take the envelope and put it in the direction that the wind is going. They will start a, a fan, an inflation fan and cold inflate with just cold air, so you usually pack it full of cold air and then they hot inflate the balloon. One of the number one rules in, at any balloonist is do not step on the fabric of the balloon. It's laying out there on the ground, I know, and it, it's easy to maybe think you can step over it, but we ask you to not do that. Uh, stepping on the fabric can harm the balloon and cause holes in the fabric. Once the balloons hot inflate, they will wait for a launch director, and when the launch director comes and gives them the okay and makes sure that the traffic overhead is clear, they'll take off and fly. And once they land, they'll come down, and their crew hopefully will be there to meet them and, and uh, help them land and take care of any landowner relations. Pilots use a number of tools to help them fly. Uh, one of them required by the FAA is called an altimeter. It tells the pilot how high they are off um, from sea level. Another one is called a variometer. The variometer uh, will tell the pilot how fast they are going up or down in terms of feet per minute. A lot of pilots will use a uh, GPS, um, and there's also a barometer that tells the uh, air pressure outside. That's actually used more to set the altimeter, the correct altitude on the altimeter. The chase crew is responsible for helping the pilot in, uh, inflate the balloon and then also chasing the balloon while it's in the air and then helping them pack the balloon up when they're done flying. Your chase crew is um, a reflection of you, so 
as a pilot, so we ask that the chase crews are very careful in what they do and, and make sure that the pilot is okay with what they're doing. The pilots um, have to go through training and they're certified by the FAA. F to, in order to be a private pilot, you need ground instruction, which is called a ground school, and it's a class that's usually about 20 hours worth of instruction. In order to get your pilot's license, a pilot needs 10 hours of instruction from a certified instructor and that in will include different maneuvers. Most people take more than 10 hours to get their license and at the end of the 10 hours they are signed off by their instructor in or and they will get what's called a check ride. The check ride is performed by an FAA designated flight examiner and there is an oral portion as well as a flight portion of your check ride. The second uh, certification for a balloon pilot is a commercial certification and that um, takes 20 hours of flight time and you have to do a check ride again with a uh, FAA designated examiner. The commercial pilot's uh, designation of, of a pilot certificate enables you to be an instructor and paid commercially. Uh, balloons at the Balloon Fiesta, we usually have about 550 balloons and we have one of the largest gatherings of special shape uh, balloons in the world. We usually have close to a hundred. During Balloon Fiesta, about half of the balloon pilots compete in competitions that we designate as part of the Balloon Fiesta. The other half are here to fly basically for fun. The competition pilot may either take off from the field and fly to an off-field target or they may take off from off-field and fly into the field as, as an on-field target, at which point we have to make sure that all the non-competition balloons are off the field before the competition is open for the competition pilots to fly into the field. In October, the winds in general tend to go to the north and to the west. Uh, a lot of pilots will land in Rio Rancho and Corrales. Uh, we do have the occasional day where the pilots will take off and fly south. Uh, flying over town is a little crazy, but there are plenty of places to land depending on the size of your balloon and the speed of the winds. If the winds are quick, it's uh, smart to land past the airport. All of the pilots do have an aircraft radio with them so they can talk to the air traffic control center. We work with them closely during planning for Balloon Fiesta to make sure that they they're understand what's going on and that they're okay with everything. We have lots of different officials on the field. Uh, one of the groups is the scoring group and their main objective is to keep track of the competition and to score the pilots that compete. Uh, they will be, they're out there uh, during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday during competitions and they will actually um, make sure everybody adheres to the scoring competition rules. Uh, we also have launch directors. Their main priority is to make sure that the uh, balloons get off in a safe, coordinated launch. They check for overhead traffic to make sure that the balloons do not have a collision midair on takeoff, and they also make sure that the pilots are ready and understand when, they're, when it's time for them to go. Another group is the safety officials group, and their main objective is to make sure that all the pilots are safe, and again, that they're obeying a lot of uh, what we've got in the FAA waiver is uh, in terms of tie-offs, they need to man their fans, um, things like that, that their balloons are airworthy. And uh, there are a couple more officials, the um, assistant balloon meister and balloon meister. And their objective is they are basically in charge of all the flight operations from the Balloon Fiesta Park field. Um, it's uh, a daunting job and uh, usually pretty stressful, but um, they coordinate all the officials, all the launch directors, all the safety officials, and all the scoring officials and make sure that everybody's doing their job and getting everybody, making sure the pilots are, are co uh, cooperating and, and doing the right thing. In terms of launch, uh, we have what's called a three row rule and the pilots will, if they watch three rows, approximately three rows down, uh, when a balloon three rows down from them is taking off, that should be their cue to go from a cold inflation to a hot inflation and prepare to take off. Um, the launch directors, because of the number of balloons and the number of launch directors, the launch directors aren't able to be able to talk to every single pilot and tell them exactly when to go hot and when to go cold and, and everything, but they, they cannot take off without a launch director. 
launched. When the launch directors walk up and uh, get ready to launch a pilot, they will give any last minute information that they have regarding weather or conditions to the pilot before giving them what was called the thumbs up and uh, letting them take off. Every morning, every, every pilot that flies in Balloon Fiesta is required to attend what's called the pilot's briefing. At this briefing, the Balloon Meister will give uh, any pertinent information. They will give information on competition, any of the tasks involved in the competition. They will give information on the weather. Uh, for the non-competition pilots, they will give them any pertinent information. Any changes in the competition will be communicated to the pilots during pilot briefing and in the rule book. Most of the competitions take off from off the field and fly into the field. When they fly into the field, there's some type of target for them to aim at. And depending on the competition, there may be sand-filled little bags with a tail on them made out of nylon. And then they have the pilot's name and uh, in number and information, registration information on the baggie. And they will throw that at the target. The prizes depend on the year, and a lot of our prizes are donated by sponsors. There is usually a uh, balloon system, and it depends on the manufacturer who we decide to uh, go with that year. Um, some years there have been uh, Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Other years there have been uh, vehicles. The America's Challenge is a gas balloon race that is held at Balloon Fiesta every year. And uh, we usually have between 10 and 20 gas balloons. Uh, they use gases either helium or hydrogen, depending on the balloon and depending on the crew. And they all take off from here. The uh, competition for them is to see who can fly the furthest and that, pers that team will win. The weather is a huge factor for them. They can only take off if the frontal movement around the Balloon Fiesta Park is just right. We have several balloon glows at Balloon Fiesta. Uh, basically what a balloon glow is, is that the balloons will inflate right before the sun goes down and they'll uh, stay on the ground because they're not certified to fly in the dark. They burn the burners and we try to do coordinated burns where all the balloons burn at once. Um, so you have all these beautiful balloons lighting up in the middle of the night and it's, it's really pretty. We have several safety tips for basically everybody, um, spectators, volunteers, everybody out there. Um, the first one, for I hope obvious reasons, is no smoking on the field. There's several reasons for this. One of them is balloons use propane, which is highly flammable. There's always the possibility of a leak. We hope it doesn't happen, but there is that possibility. So we ask that, that everybody refrain from smoking on the field. Uh, another issue with smoking is if somebody drops a lit cigarette and a balloon lays out near them, that cigarette will actually burn through and melt the fabric in a little tiny hole through several layers of fabric and it creates a lot of issues for the pilots. The balloons should be tied off to their truck with ropes. We call these tie-offs. Um, they're tied from the basket to somewhere on the truck. This rope is to help um, stabilize the balloon before takeoff. So we ask that uh, volunteers don't walk between the balloon basket and the treks. We also ask that you watch, watch for the crown line. The crown line is a rope that is attached to the very top of the balloon and it's used to stabilize the envelope during inflation. There's usually somebody at the end of this rope holding onto the rope and it, making it taut. We ask that you be very careful around the crown lines. Uh, try not to step over them or um, only step under them if you make sure the person that is manning the crown line knows that you're there and that you need to go through there. A lot of what the volunteers end up doing is crowd control. A lot of the special shapes need an extraordinary amount of crowd control. Whether you're a launch director, a safety official, scoring officials, we all help with crowd control. Pilot registration is held the Thursday and Friday prior to Balloon Fiesta and it's held in a tent on the Balloon Fiesta field. Um, it's also known as the landing. The pilot registration is where all the pilots uh, get basically any extra information. Um, they make sure all their paperwork is in order. They get all of their uh, passes to get on the field. Um, they get chase crew if they've uh, asked for chase crew. And they get all their goodie bags with, for whatever pilot gifts they get. If you want to register as a chase crew, there is usually a spot, a place in the landing for chase crew registration. 
Ballooning at Balloon Fiesta is different than other events in a lot of ways. One, we are the largest uh, balloon gathering in the world and have been for several years. At one time we had a thousand balloons. Um, we have backed that down to the 550. But another very unique part about Balloon Fiesta is that we actually allow the spectators down on the field during the event. Most other events in around the world don't allow spectators around the balloons during the event uh, for safety reasons. So we actually have a reputation for being extremely safe and the fact that we have been able to do that with the spectators down on the field is, is a very great accomplishment in terms of balloon fiesta. After a flight, um, there's a, usually a ceremony and if there's any new folks, uh, first timers or your first lesson, your first uh, pilot's license, your check ride, passing your check ride. Basically, any real good reason to celebrate is what we'll do. <laughs> and as part of the ceremony, there's a, a, a prayer that has um, been going around for years, and they call it the Irish Balloonist's Prayer. And it goes uh, something like this. It says, may, may the winds welcome you with softness. May the sun bless you with warm hands. May you fly so high and so well that God joins you in your laughter and sets you back again gently into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Some uh, common, common questions people have about balloon fiesta, and we've touched on some of them. One of them is uh, what gas do balloons use uh, to, to fly, and um, it's basically propane. It's highly flammable, and the burner systems are uh, designed to handle them, and they do about 18 million BTUs in terms of uh, output. A lot of times, the balloons will be on the ground, and it may seem calm to the spectators. There may be a problem with the wind, what we call the winds aloft. Winds aloft are the winds off the ground, uh, and they may be way too fast for the balloons to fly. Those uh, winds may be um, dangerous to the balloons in terms of having them take off, so we will leave them on the ground. Uh, a lot of times if it is calm on the ground, we will go ahead and inflate them, but keep them on the ground instead of letting them fly in dangerous conditions. Uh, a lot of people ask if we can steer a balloon, and the answer is really basically no. Uh, but we can to some degree because in Albuquerque, the winds tend to go different directions at different altitudes. Sometimes this is more pronounced than others. Uh, in, an example is the Albuquerque box. You can take off from the Bloom Fiesta Park field and go south. If you go up higher, the winds will go towards the north. And then you could fly back over the Bloom Fiesta Park field and come down back on the field. It's happened more than once. The Balloon Fiesta and the FAA work very closely together. Uh, during Balloon Fiesta, we have several uh, members of the FAA on site, and uh, they help us with pilot registration, making sure that uh, paperwork and pilots are current and that they have all of their paperwork in order. Uh, Balloon Fiesta Park becomes one of the busiest airports in the world in terms of flight operations. We will have approximately 500 takeoffs every day during Balloon Fiesta and that's within one hour. There's not too many airports that can do 500 flights in one hour. So we do work very closely with the FAA to make sure that we make that as safe as possible. Um, in terms of the airspace, we actually own the airspace during Balloon Fiesta. So no other aircraft are allowed to enter the airspace during Balloon Fiesta unless we give them permission to do so. A lot of people ask how much it costs to own a balloon or to buy a balloon and become a pilot. A uh, balloon, kind of in general, is a good rule of thumb. You could say it's about the same cost as a car. You can buy a used balloon for um, probably five to ten thousand dollars, or you can buy a new balloon, and of course those are ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending on what make of balloon you buy. They go up from there, like the special shaped balloons are very expensive. Some of them are upwards of $100,000, depending on the, the design and, and what's on the balloon. So it's, it's kind of like a car, and the insurance, is, um, the insurance is slightly cheaper than a car, but not by a lot. The fun part with buying a balloon is it takes a place to store it, and it takes something to haul it in. So you either have to have a trailer or a truck or both. Uh, 
So it's, it's, it's an investment, uh, but um, it's, it's worth it. Each balloon is required to have an annual, uh, basically like a checkup um, on the fabric and the balloon system. Once a year or at 100 hours, if it's flown commercially, the balloon will go into a repair station and they will test the fabric. And the manufacturers have specifications on the fabric and if the fabric does not pass those specifications, then the fabric has to re be replaced. In some instances, this may mean that it's too expensive to actually replace the balloon, so they will have to retire it at that point. How much do balloon pilots get paid to be a balloon fiesta? Most of them, especially the regular shaped balloons, do not get paid to be here. Out of town pilots, a lot of times they will get a room from balloon fiesta, but for the most part, most pilots coming here do not get paid. Some of the special shaped pilots do get paid to be here uh, in terms of promoting the uh, event with their special shape, but again, most folks are here for the fun of it. You can get a balloon ride um, at Balloon Fiesta, depending on, on uh, the pilot. You can crew for a pilot, and a lot of them will give their crew rides. Uh, we also have a uh, contracted balloon ride company here at Balloon Fiesta, and to, you can pay for a ride uh, during Balloon Fiesta through them. We have red balloons that are inflated and they're at 75 feet. Once a pilot flies into the Balloon Fiesta Park, the minimum altitude is 75 feet until they reach the scoring area. So the red balloons that are placed around the scoring area help the pilots make sure that they are at 75 feet until they get to the scoring area. Within the scoring area, the pilots are able to go down to but not touch the ground in the scoring area. So if they do touch the ground, they are disqualified from whatever event they are, whatever the event is that we're scoring at that time. Balloons can only fly at certain times of the day. Um, well, actually, balloons can fly any time of the day. It's smarter and safer to fly them in the early morning. In general, the balloons will fly until about two hours after sunrise. The balloons don't fly in the rain because inside the balloon, the temperature can be 200 to 250 degrees. And if the balloon gets wet, then that becomes um, steam and it superheats the fabric and damages the fabric. So the balloons do not fly in the rain, if at all possible. Most balloons will not fly at night. Uh, they are not rated to fly at night. They don't have lights. Um, and one of the biggest reasons is once they need to land, they can't see any of the landing spots at night. Um, power lines and obstructions, they won't be able to see if, if it's dark out. Dawn Patrol is an exception to flying at night. They take off uh, about half an hour to an hour before sunrise and they have special lights that are made for balloons in order for them to fly at night. The gas balloons also use these uh, same lights because their flights last several days. The, the hot air balloons will take off in the, in the dark and as the sun comes up then they can start looking for landing spots. Uh, balloons uh, bump into each other during mass ascension. 90% of the time uh, during the mass ascension, because we have so many balloons here, they will actually bump into each other and it's usually fabric to fabric uh, contact between the balloons. That's usually not an issue. Uh, we do have problems when a basket comes in contact with fabric because there's always the possibility that a basket has a sharp spot on it or something that can tear the fabric of the balloon that it's touching and that will cause damage to the other balloon and uh, it, it's possible we could have a problem with that. We want to thank all of you for your commitment to help Balloon Fiesta and volunteering at Balloon Fiesta. We really hope you have a fun time and that you enjoy your experience and we do appreciate you being here but we also want to make sure that you're safe and have a great year. Thanks for coming.